Hello, I'd like to just talk to you about uh, New Testament Christian Church. It's um, NTCC uh, for short. They're in Graham, Washington. It's their headquarters and where their Bible seminary is. Uh, my tell you right in a nutshell, uh, I'm a, I've been doing a lot of research about Freemasonry and uh, different groups. Uh, there's a lot of information online, very uh, much available. It takes time to research it if you want to look it up. Uh, my question is, uh, are the, uh, is the New Testament Christian Church somehow connected to the Freemasons and that whole movement to uh, basically uh, seize control of all aspects of society and uh, um, are basically are they are they connected with them? There's uh, I, I you know I've studied a lot about um, history, church history, and uh, world history things related, and uh, there is now I believe a conspiracy, and it's uh, ancient. You know it, it goes back so many eons. It goes back before the time of Christ. Um, uh, and uh, But it basically one man traces it. I just watched the video. He, there's a man saying that he traces it from Gnosticism through different groups, various groups. Basically the Freemasons claim to be uh, connected throughout history all the way back to uh, Tubal Cain. The metal worker and they say he was the first mason and then after the flood they say their uh, I guess their origin is with uh, Nimrod the one who uh, built the the, uh, the tower and was the uh, the mighty hunter before the Lord and uh, the Lord didn't like what they did under his rule um, he was uh, ruling with like a, in a region of uh, well it says plainly, you know, that he uh, created Babylonia, and uh, a lot of people have done research. They've searched artifacts and all things. And I guess the the, the, the religion of Baal, uh, they say, originated uh, because of him. Uh, he made himself as a god, so to speak, a, a ruler to be worshipped, and. Um, he wanted to sit on top of this tower, perhaps, and that's why he made the tower. That's one theory, and uh, he also had a um, a, like a mistress or a wife, uh, Semiramis. Who legend had it that she he met her in the in, in the as he came up the um, uh, the Euphrates, I think from Africa, came back towards where the Garden of Eden was. Uh, and uh, between the Tigris and the Euphrates and established a civilization and I think he met her and that's why you see uh, the symbolism like on Starbucks, the mermaid, that, that symbol I think comes from Semiramis, his lover or his wife and uh, she was in control of the religious side of the empire and he was the controls of, uh, in control of the uh, secular side of the empire. Well, uh, come to find out her position was more important because people uh, tend to respect religion more than secular authority. And uh, basically you have these two gods. She was the queen of heaven. You can read about her in Jeremiah. I think maybe chapter uh, 45 maybe. I'm not going to look it up right now. But it's in Jeremiah, the queen of heaven, the King James Version. There's a few mentions of uh, in one passage about the um, the Jews, the Judahites that uh, Jeremiah was rebuking so they were going to worship the Queen of Heaven instead of God. Well, uh, all this uh, idolatry, it's really, you have two religions. You have God's religion and the devil's religion. That's all there is. There's not a whole bunch of uh, different religions, different ways to seek God. But I, I know you're wondering how does this tie into New Testament Christian Church, but I, I, I have to go through the history. I cannot just jump. You know, I, It's taken me months and months to research this. Okay, I'm trying to give you, I'm trying to lay the groundwork here. I am talking about New Testament Christian Church, okay, because that's what I'm familiar with. It. That's my experience in the religious world, the Christian, uh, so-called Christian religious world. Um, 
Uh, I think there's a lot of counterfeits out there. But let's get back to where I was, okay? Uh, just trust me on this. Okay, I'm going somewhere with this. Just, just give me just, you know, if, if, if you're one of the kind of people you want a quick answer in five seconds, then, you know, go watch something else. But I, I got something I want to share. I think it's important. Uh, anyways, Freemasons, they uh, uh, basically... They, they, they trace their origin back to Nimrod. They they think that um, he was the first mason. He built the tower. Uh, the um, I didn't have this all in my notes, so I'm I'm kind of off uh, course here. I'm just gonna go right into the the conspiracy. So, see, I think the 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 New Testament Christian Church. What what I think they do is they um, they they kind of give a counterfeit of what Christianity is all about. You know, it comes so close. It really is convincing. You know, and I was convinced. Some of you maybe watching this video were convinced that this was what Christianity was all about, and that's why we gave our time, we gave our money, we gave our efforts, uh, we sacrificed, we worked hard. To uh, keep whatever local church we were serving in afloat, um, and then you know we find out that there's a few people that are uh, uh, so much more wealthy than us. You know they they have so many more things than us, um, and so we felt kind of hurt by that. You know that that we were giving and they they seem to be taking a lot more than giving, and so. Uh, just, uh, I felt personally kind of, you know, confused by that. You know, why is it that I was giving so much, sacrificing so much, didn't have very much. It wasn't like a couple of years that I had to do that and then, uh, you know, everything was okay. It was like the whole time, you know, it's like, you know, you jump from, you know, you just um, struggle to get by. And then you, you find out that this one has a mansion, he's driving around in a Cadillac, and then a BMW. I was talking to a girl on the phone, you know, I was, uh, she was um, a church member, I had had permission to talk to her, and uh, we were talking on the phone, and she was telling me that her middle name, her name had some, part of her name had something to do with a car that Reverend Keckle had. And, and, and that was how I was supposed to guess her name. She was like, I'll give you a hint. That Reverend Keckel has a car named after me. And I had I had heard that he had a, a BMW. And I was surprised by that, you know, that he went from having a Cadillac to a BMW. Uh, he went from an older Cadillac when I was in Bible school to having a nicer, newer, more modern Cadillac. And he claimed it was an older one, but it had the symbol thing on the front all this stuff in it. it. It definitely looked like a modern, a newer one. And then uh, he had a BMW. Someone said something about, like, he was the guy that I lived with at the time. He was cleaning it. And then she was telling me her name has to do with, with his, his, you know, if I knew what kind of car he had, then I'd know her middle name or something. And I was like, BMW? Is your name BMW? She's like, Reverend Keckle doesn't have a BMW. And, and I was like, and she told me her middle name, and I was like, Reverend Kiko doesn't have a Mercedes? Because that's what, I guess, her middle name was. And I'm like, I'm like, huh? And I found out later on, his brother, brother uh, Cunningham, he was like, I was riding in his car to go check out his new house. And he's like, Reverend Kiko does have a Mercedes, but if people find out about it, then they'll find fault with him. So he doesn't let people, he doesn't drive it around. Wow, BMW and a Mercedes. And then, uh, you know, he's, he moved up, saw his house on, uh, like, Google Earth or something. And uh, they, you know, they said his house was right next to Pastor Davis. He's, they both got these big houses. Anyways, you know, um, just seemed kind of odd to me that like, they had all these things and we were just, had hardly anything. Now, let, let me go on. I don't want to take up too much time. So call it what you will. If you think that's Christianity, you know, where, where someone's getting rich, but yet they're acquiring other people or, or making, you know, misleading them kind of. Like we had no idea they had those things, and here we were sacrificing and giving. Uh, and, and we just, I mean, I just felt like that was, uh, 
I don't know, how, how do you feel about that? When, when, when you've been giving and giving, you know, when you only have $2,000 saved up and your pastor tells you, you really need, I really need someone to be a leader and buy a car. So, I mean, what are you supposed to do? You're a Christian, you know, you, this is your pastor telling you, it has nothing to do with pride or stupidity uh, and everything to do with, well, okay, this is, this is what God, you know, this is, this is the man that God has over me, so, you know, uh, he, that's what he needs. So, I mean, you know, they put a guilt trip on you. They make you feel like, uh, you know, this is what he needs. So you go out and do it, and then you get no money now. So uh, it's all to keep the, the church afloat. When, when these people that are loaded could, uh, could um, you know, provide a vehicle for transporting people and just say, hey, brother, here's the keys. You're going to go pick people up for church. Go take the church van, you know. So um, I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. And then, um, but then, so so what is it? If it's not really Christianity, then what is it? Why were they like that? Why were they, why were they um, that way? I mean, what's the answer? So I, I, I did a lot of research, and I found out that the, um, there's this secret society, these uh, um, infiltrating America, because I used to wonder, how come in, uh, in our church, this organization, they're, you know, they're always talking about politics, uh, promoting certain things. You know, I remember being in one church helping a pastor, and they're just constantly talking about politics. And you know, he he's he really loves Pastor Davis so much. You know, he really respects him. He believes in him, and uh, you know, his same with his wife. And so I have to think that you know he's probably just copying him, you know, in, in talking about politics so much, uh, because I'm sure that he emulates uh, Reverend Davis so much, but he, he would just talk about politics, and, and I, I had to wonder, why does it feel like I'm being, uh, you know, like conditioned somehow, you know, they're trying to frame my way of thinking about politics, and how to sway my vote, how to make me think about certain things, and issues, and, um, you know, it's got nothing to do with Christianity, it, it just Republican versus Democrat, and conservative versus uh, liberal, and uh, all this stuff to do with, um, you know, so many times we were told, I remember Pastor Dave was talking about how uh, property tax, we, should, we shouldn't vote for property taxes for the rich property owners to go up, um, because then it's just going to make you pay higher rent, you know, I, all this stuff... I mean, the Bible says to plead the cause of the poor. So, uh, why are we pleading the cause of the rich? Well, it's obvious, because the leaders were rich. Just stop.